Hi folks, welcome to the call. We are going to give people a minute or two to get situated and uh, join the call before we start. But uh, thanks for signing on and uh, ho hopefully it will be uh, informative and useful. One note also for everybody participating is that these calls are recorded. Um, we generally publish them on the Republic site within a few days. So, um, you know, feel free to ask any questions you'd like, and we will obviously, uh, uh, apart from a little bit of audio cleanup, uh, those, those will be uh, in the recording that's on the site uh, soon after. Um, my name's Sam, I'm the CEO of Axel AI, and I'm joined today by uh, Patrice Gutebel, who's our Vice President for Product Development, and also Katie Scott, who's our VP of Operations. And uh, we are here to answer any and all questions you may have. Uh, we generally kick off the call with uh, a little bit of a presentation or demo. I think today we're going to lead off with the demo simply because Patrice uh, has to jump on a customer call in about 15 minutes. Uh, I think it's an indication that the economy is starting to pick up again, that um, customer calls are more and more of a, of a uh, pressing time uh, time use for us. So uh, it, we're encouraged by, by that level of activity. Um, so uh, with that, I think, you know, the other thing I, before diving into the demo, maybe just briefly, uh, we had a, a very positive week last week. We broke through the $50,000 mark with the offering, which is, uh, which is great. It's double our initial goal um, and halfway to kind of the theoretical maximum of, uh, of 107,000. And um, also, it was a very good week in the sense that we uh, rolled out a pro version of our software, uh, which supports uh, Avid's Media Composer editing uh, software. And uh, that's something we've been working on for a while. Uh, a lot of high-end customers uh, rely on Avid. It's, it's uh, very well entrenched in some of the biggest broadcasters and movie studios. Uh, it's also true that, you know, when you like the Oscars or, or the, uh, the Emmys, like Avid is generally overrepresented um, in those award shows. So, you know, it's, it's great that our product now interfaces with that. Uh, and we, that's been generating a fair amount of the uh, the customer uh, inflow and, and inqu inquiries in the last, uh, just last week. So with that, I think I will turn it over to Patrice to give a broad introduction to what Axel's about. And then um, uh, again, we'll flip back to the Q&A uh, for the latter part of the call. So I'll, over to you, Patrice. Great, thanks. Thanks a lot, Sam, and welcome folks. So let me just basically tell you what Axel does and why it is appealing to a lot of companies that produce these videos. Uh, first, I'm going to launch the web browser and, and typically this is the interface you're going to use to access Axel. It will be through the web browser. Uh, that does not mean the solution is in the cloud though. Axel is software that you install and it will index the content of your drive or multiple drives. And we are talking for companies, not something for, for uh, small people. We do have premium options for other tools, but not for Axon. And let's say I am a uh, movie studio or, or a post-production house or news gathering information. So a lot of different uh, companies producing videos. What I will do is I will log in into my Axel system and I will see the content of my drives uh, right off the bat in, in Axel. So, uh, you know, you can access it remotely if you were to set up the proper tools such as VPN or, or, or remote or uh, reverse proxy, I should I say. And these have been very handy uh, tools for a lot of our customers when it came the time to go work remotely. Uh, so from the web browser, I can see the content of my drive that is still in the office. Or if I am uh, uh, in the office, I do not need a special software, I just access it. And here you have the content of my drives and I have multiple uh, folders on the left side that I can see the content and browse. Uh, we automatically generate a preview and it can be PDF, it can be photos. As you can see here, I have a photo and I will have all the information that comes with the photo, uh, all the information from the camera or the file itself. 
uh, going back. So you have the we, you have the previews that have been created, and for videos, we also gave a quick uh, scrubbing of the thumbnail, so I can just go in and see and see the content of my video even before I, I, I go for it. And of course, we provide the possibility to preview the video, so. I can scrub, I can play. So we create this preview so, so people do not need to worry about the video format. They will always be able to see it on any device that has a browser. So it can also be tablet or phone. Uh, so I can play the video, I can, uh, but more importantly, I can start to tag it. What we mean by tagging is I can just go say, and for example, I see switch the glasses, I can make a quick comment here in and out point and say, you know, switch glasses uh, I'm not going to worry about the, the, the about the uh, typo here but here I have this information now associated to the timeline of my video and it is searchable it would become searchable now on the right side where I showed you all the information from the camera file for the for the photo uh, you have also the information about the video but but you will also see what we call custom metadata and this would be the user tags and when I would click on edit, I can enter different information such as keyword. So I have Bill Gates and I have Fallon. So I can just go and enter keyword. Uh, drop down menu so I can choose the other location when it was shot. So these are data fields that the system administrator is creating. Uh, and when I say this information is available and become searchable. Now, why would a company need to do that? Well, let me just do a search, like a very silly search. I would just want to find everything in my storage. And you will see that I have close to a million files. I have roughly 889,000 files in my, in, in my demo system right here. And this is a small snippet of what typically our customers will do. They will have twice or three times as much. And just imagine how long it would take me to figure out where, for example, Benedict Cumberbatch up here, or where do I have the clip with Jimmy Fallon and Bill Gates? I have millions of files to try to figure it out. Now, if I were to type, you know, Bill Gates, what did we start to find? So based either on the file name or other tools. Uh, but let's do Benedict. Uh, I will do Benedict here, and you will see that I have again Jimmy Fallon with Benedict Cumberbatch, still the, the the file name, and here I have why is Benedict Cumberbatch hot? The SNS kids, but more importantly, you will see that I have a little face. Let me zoom in a little bit in here. Uh, you will see that I have a little face here showing me who appears in the video. And this is where the AI comes in. So remember, I had about a million files. And when I will go in, you will see underneath the video player, I have more tabs than just the comments. And for example, I have faces. So I will know exactly where Beck Bennett or Bay Cumberbatch appear. And depending on the engine you use, it can be trained against the people that are part of your company or can be trained on specific teams in sports or whatnot, or celebrities or athletes. So it depends on what you train it for. And there are engines that have already the data sets available for celebrities. So I did not need to enter anything here. It already knew who the people were. And I know exactly where they appear in the video. Not only that, I can know what appear in the video. So would be a bit boring because it's like a, a simulating a game show. But if I check on electronic, you will see that I have the uh, the screen right here. And now you will also have monitor. So I know what to appear in the video and when they're appearing in the video. And it's very handy if you have a lot of jumping scene and you look for species, for animals or, 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 or like, a, you know, oh, in this video, do I have any cars? Let me search for cars and so on. It will, and it will help you find the snippet that you need. So who appears in the video, what appears in the video, and what about what is being said? We also have the transcript. Uh, it will be hard to hear, but this is basically what is being said. And you, it is, again, searchable. So I can search across what is being said. And I can merge all of that in my search. I can search for being cover back and, uh, let's say, the Game Show Network. I can say Game Show Network Benedict. 
Fix it a typo. And here we go. I found it. You see, I do not have the second file for Benedict Cumberbatch. I found I have only one file. Now imagine that I was able to find this specifically based on what it was being said and who was in the video and none of what I have entered manually. And this is why the AI tool is very appealing to a lot of our customers. Uh, we have we can integrate with different tools so I can go in and have uh, if I analyze the video we have uh, in addition to our own uh, uh, speech -to text engine we we tied it to also Microsoft video indexer speech matics we're looking at the Amazon engines so we are trying to provide a platform that will allow people to search and find their media and we are also developing now that we have a lot of uh, you know open source tools such as OpenCV and TensorFlow and everything, and you have actually a lot more uh, possibilities to do in-house AI de AI uh, development and machine learning. We are also developing our own facial recognition tool and our own object tool, and that's something that we are looking to provide at a monthly fee in addition to our software. And, speaking and just, to, just to add, actually, uh, yes, some uh, commentary to that. The issue with the, the big name engines is that they're still quite expensive. So, for instance, Microsoft, yeah. which is the tool that he's using to create these comments here, they charge in the neighborhood of $9 per hour of footage. And that's fine if you're using it for relatively high value content. But a lot of our customers will store essentially all of their footage uh, on, on a system cataloged by Axel, could be thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of hours, raw footage, outtakes, things that didn't get used. So it, it's a bit overkill to spend nine bucks an hour on that. You could easily get into, a, you know, it'd be much more expensive than, than the storage it was housed on. And so we don't see that as being particularly realistic. Right now, AI is, is kind of a leading edge capability for these customers, uh, but they're not willing to like, you know, spend massive amounts of money on it except in unusual cases. Go ahead, Patrice, sorry. Yeah, no, please. So, that, uh, so this was really, uh, that was a quick demo of our flag product, Axel. Now we talked about uh, companies using it. So what about the rest of the world? Like they, obviously there is a lot uh, more potential uh, if we were to have a SaaS model for, you know, you're looking at, a, at an investor point of view. Okay, that's great. You're, you're doing B2B, but what about the consumer, the general consumer? They also shoot videos. They may need also something. And so we developed a freemium called Ascribe right here, and I'm just going to launch it. Uh, and what it does, it, it, it's free, but you still need to sign up to our service and pay a, a, a subscription fee or buy a block of minutes to use it. And what it does is simply, I will just go in and again, so that, that I, I keep getting back to this clip. Uh, let's see if I have another one. Uh, you can go and have uh, this clip and I will open it and you can transcribe it. And that's particularly useful. Actually, I had my wife try to because she was supposed to take minutes of the Zoom meeting. So she had the recording of the Zoom meeting and used it. Um, uh, and she was able to just get minutes right away uh, for, for her team. So it's, it's, it can be like for videos, a meeting, phone calls, audio, a lot of different things. Uh, but it is actually a fraction of the cost of what other companies will do. And to give you an idea, the, 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 the gold standard for closed captioning and, and a very, a very accurate tool, it's about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, is it like $2 per minute of footage? That's right. Yeah, two two dollar per minute of footage. We are providing a two dollar per sixty minutes of footage, so per hour, and less than two dollar actually. Uh, and and so we we provide the tools for some video editors or anybody really. And that's a freemium that is available on both Mac and PC. Uh, so this is what we are trying to we are we have launched recently to target uh, the consumer market. So have to also to provide also a B two C solution. And with that, I am almost at the top of the, my time, but we have also a third product called Connector. And the, the idea of Connector is to automate workflows. It's still targeted toward the video because that's what we do. That's, um, that's, that's who we know uh, when we talk to, so video. But the reality is it can be done for anything, uh, everything else in addition to video. 
Uh, but for example, I can just have a quick uh, 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 a diagram that is going to automate. Okay, I have a watch folder, and for each new file, I'm just going to do an MD5 checksum and copy it somewhere else. In this case, I copy it to a Dropbox so that it's also approved to my Dropbox. Uh, that's one quick example of to what I can do to automate. And that's, again, something that is being looked a second time, but uh, uh, taken a closer look, I should say, by uh, our customers and, and potential leads, because even though some offices are reopening slowly, uh, you still have 25% capacity, but the work is still there. So how can you help automate some workflows while I have less people in, in the office? And with that, I will turn it back over to Sam uh, and answer your questions. Thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate it. And feel free to reach out by, by email or directly on the Republic portal if you have a, any comments or questions. Yeah, Patrice, I'll leave them your email address so we can get in touch. Excellent. With you. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks a lot for your time. Bye now. All right, so for the remainder, hopefully that was useful. And you know, for those of you that have not seen a demo of Axel before, um, most of our customers use the core functionality. Uh, an increasing number obviously use the AI features and the workflow automation, uh, and especially the larger deals. So as we, as we kind of move into uh, more ambitious deployments, uh, we're seeing more and more use of, of uh, things like, like the workflow automation because there's always something that our baseline product doesn't do. And one thing we've been very good at, I think, is resisting the urge to kind of gum it up with all kinds of special requests. Uh, once you get into hundreds of customers, that can be very challenging. And so what we've chosen to do instead is essentially build this separate engine where people can go wild, but it won't impact our, our shrink wrap product. And I think that split has worked very well for us. Connector is really uh, gaining momentum and is probably involved in more than half of our high-end deals these days. Um, so with that, um, I don't think we have any questions so far. Let me just uh, type uh, Patrice's email address for everyone. Um, and uh, let's see, um, don't be shy. I would say just you know, ask away. If you, if you do have questions, uh, happy to answer them. And that is the purpose of the call. Uh, we do hold these every Monday, and, and I'll just put my email address as well. Um, we found this to be a very good uh, kind of process uh, for us and for the investors so that we're able to, you know, answer questions as they come up. There's also the written Q&A built into the Republic uh, site format, and that's very good as well. Um, but in general, I think, you know, people um, have have sort of spur of the moment questions or they'll hear the answer to question and that will generate additional questions. Let me just type my, uh... oh great, there's some questions coming in. Okay, first question, will this video be posted on the Axel AI site? Oh, that's a good question. Actually, we have not been putting them on our website, partly because I, I don't actually know what the regulatory issues are of having something that was done for the equity crowdfunding on our main site. I believe what Republic recommends is that you just say, hey, go to our crowdfunding site rather than kind of scatter bits of material between the two. So I think given that this is done in the context of Republic, we probably just want to keep funneling people there, but the recordings are posted there. Uh, here's another question uh, from Chris. Could you explain what Ascribe.ai is? Yes, so that's the speech engine that Patrice was talking about, uh, which is under $2 uh, per hour. That speech engine, Right now, most of the customers for that are inside the core Axle application. Um, but it occurred to us uh, late last year and early this year that there is a much potentially bigger opportunity if you take that speech transcription engine and you just make it a plug-in for mainstream applications like Adobe Premiere or Dropbox. And so what we've done in pretty quick succession is this thing called a scribe, which essentially is a uh, a straight shot from the application you're running in into the transcription with the answer back without having to make the capital investment or, or the setup of having uh, the full Axel product uh, suite there. So uh, it's given us the opportunity to reach a whole lot of people that would not have otherwise heard of us, uh, including some customers that actually are better candidates for our bigger products in the long run. So it's, it's been very worthwhile. Um, 
And, but it's still early, quite early. Like the Dropbox one just came out about uh, uh, two months ago, a month and a half even, month and a half. So yeah, we, we've uh, got a long way to go in terms of learning how to address that broader market. It's a freemium product where people can just download it and immediately start using it. Uh, they get one hour free transcription with the, the free software and then they have to put in a credit card and, and uh, essentially purchase either blocks of time or a monthly subscription. Um, let's see. Um, a modular approach of individual stock. Oh, thank you. Uh, Ronnie said, uh, I like the modular approach uh, of the individual software. Yeah, we, we, we think that's better than the, uh, what's the, the, the hairball approach where it just like gets bigger and messier over time. Um, and, and with modern REST APIs, it's very easy to build products that interconnect tightly, but still don't share a code base. That, you know, five or 10 years ago, that would have not been so easy to do. And a lot of the legacy products in the space, which cost 10 times as much as ours, are really victims of this. In other words, every time a customer requested a feature, uh, they would have this horrible moment where this, well, we could add that feature, but then it's going to kind of pollute everything else we're doing. It's going to get bigger and bigger. You know, another term for it is feature creep. Uh, if the core product just keeps suffering from that, then there are two problems, actually. One is it gets very, very hard to maintain all of those features and modifications at once. But the second, even bigger problem is that individual customers who got a special tweak just for them uh, end up having to kind of rejoin the mainstream of, of what everybody else has. And that's usually very costly and site specific. Uh, I experienced this a lot when I was doing high-end media management uh, at Avid, but they're not unique uh, in this regard. This is also true of, of the competition, uh, people like Levels Beyond and Millet. You know, they sell million dollar systems. When you're doing that, it's very hard if the customer says, oh, could you just do this one or two extra things? You always say yes. So over time, there goes, you know, the product gets bigger and bigger and messier and messier. And, um, but the thing, the tweaks that you did for that customer might or may not end up making it back into the main release. And then when that com customer comes back, say a year or two later and wants the upgrade, you have to remember all the special things you did for them or else when you install the upgrade, you're gonna wipe those out. At that point, it becomes an engineering problem like how do we take the special tweaks that we did, make them work with the new version? And so you're in this constant battle of should I just say no and lose the million dollar deal or say yes, do the tweaks and suffer for the next five or seven years because every time we do an upgrade, somebody's got to go in there and remember the script we wrote or the tweak we did. Uh, both are fairly painful. So we solved that a couple of ways, Axel. First of all, we don't have million dollar deals. We do have a few uh, deals measured in the hundreds of thousands, but not, not many. Uh, and even those just use our standard software with additional capabilities uh, baked into connector. So uh, even there, it, it's kind of a product discipline where we say, if you buy our software, it's the software. That doesn't mean that big customers uh, and even mainstream customers don't have a lot of input, but the features that they request have to make sense for enough of our customers that it's not kind of a fool's errand and we're off building some goofy thing that uh, we kick ourselves for, for having done, you know, each of the next five years. So hopefully that, that gives you a sense of how this all works. It's a challenge that's faced by a lot of software companies that are just coming out of like, you know, a few dozen customers into a few hundred to a few thousand. And if you don't get it right, you can't really scale to a few thousand because you're, you're constantly fighting these uh, retrograde uh, battles of cleanup. Excellent question so far. Um, and we, only, we do only have about five minutes left in the half hour. So if there are um, additional questions, feel free. Uh, I'm just thinking about what else. Also, you know what I'll do? I will include my phone number. Both, this is a, a, not so much a technical issue, but a uh, kind of a business issue. Um, a lot of companies these days kind of hide behind help desks and bots. And so you go to their website and you know, you're immediately hit with all these automated drip marketing schemes and so on. Um, in our case, we feel it's better to just let people contact us the same way we're doing with investors. All of our customers have my cell phone number. They all have Patrice's cell phone number. 
And you think, wait a minute, you know, they must bombard you at all hours. The reality is nowadays people need a lot of encouragement to pick up the phone. Like if you don't make it super easy, they're going to prefer to go through the help desk. And, and those, that's fine. But there's a lot of um, virtue in direct old fashioned communication, whether it is by phone or, or uh, you know, an AMA session like this one. Um, anything that, that really gives people the ability to ask questions, we think adds a lot of value to the product. And in this case, adds value to the uh, equity crowdfunding round. So we err on the side of, of being available. And so far, it has not been uh, uh, too hard to do. It doesn't, you know, doesn't, doesn't get us woken up at three in the morning or anything like that. Um, let's see, have we answered all the questions? Um, yeah, one other thing is uh, we do have a YouTube channel. So be sure and look that up. There are a number of videos there with not only demos, but customer sessions. Oh, and a final thing I should mention before we, we do wrap things up today is that we're doing a customer Q&A. Uh, it's, it's kind of a free form conversation between two of our best customers who happen also to be a very good customers of the cloud storage system Backblaze. So if you've heard of Backblaze, they have over an exabyte of, of data stored for their customers. It's a staggering amount. It's a thousand petabytes, or another way of putting it is a million terabytes. Uh, and they've just been doing this bootstrap year after year. They have 150 employees. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing success story, actually. Um, anyway, they have a lot of customers who are in the media space. And so uh, two of the more visible ones who are also customers of ours, we thought we would organize a, uh, a, a sort of discussion panel on the new normal and how media companies are adapting to COVID. So um, that is, I, let's see, uh, actually, Katie, if you could share the link to that. I don't have it handy, so, um, but it's, it's this Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I know both of the, the people, they're, they're very personable and uh, opinionated, so I'm sure it's gonna be a fun, a fun conversation. And it won't just be about Axel and Backblaze. I'm sure it's gonna be all things uh, video and business and working from home and, uh, and probably a dose of you know, other technologies in there too. Um, what's working and what isn't, for instance, in terms of capture, cameras, uh, you know, how, to, how, to, how to film, how to shoot things when uh, all, the, all the rules are, are changing. So it, I, I think it'll be a very interesting event. Um, and so and there's the link, fantastic. Thanks, Katie. Um, so um, other than that, um, We've got about three minutes to go. So, oh, any plans to present at Infocom Connect? We have exhibited at Infocom in the past. Uh, it is a good show. It, it, one of the tricky parts with Infocom is that uh, we've never made a big investment there. We were a 10 by 10 booth. And it's such a huge show, you know, at the Vegas Convention Center that you can easily be overlooked. Now, when we do the NAB show, which is in April, we typically have a bigger booth, a real presence. People know who we are. We do a lot of messaging ahead of time. Infocom, it's always been a little bit of a come from behind effort. Um, so I, we, we haven't had a huge response there. I think actually going forward, and especially with this new remote work story, it could be uh, really cool. But we did not sign up for Infocom, uh, the remote, you know, the sort of uh, online show this year. Uh, it'd be interesting to hear how that, how that works. And uh, we certainly are, are open to doing it in the future because we've done it in the past and we've gotten some good, good business from it. Uh, but again, I think a lot of it depends on your booth location. That's the problem with physical shows is you have to do them for a few years to get a really good booth location. And you know, by that time, you've already spent a lot of money kind of working your way up the food chain. So uh, with, with Infocom, I'd say we're, we're not there yet, but, we, but it's, it's a good suggestion. All right. Very good. Um, I think that'll do it for now. Going, you know, maybe a last call for any additional questions. But again, thank you all for joining. Uh, it's been really, uh, really great. Really love the quality, I mean, sort of quality and, and variety of the questions. And uh, look forward to doing this again next week. Thanks so much for your time.